Hey guys and welcome to my very first tank preview. Yes, you heard right, it's not a review, it's a preview because I'm currently at the dev server of patch 1.59 and also everything I will tell you is subject to change. So we will see if Gaijin will make any adjustments to this tank or they will release it as it is. In my opinion, they, if they change anything, it will not be anything drastic. But before we um, talk about this tank, uh, a little bit of um, yeah, of taste of my opinion about ATGMs. When playing this tank and also researching this tank on the dev server, I found out that ATGMs are a funny thing until they shoot you or the enemy shoots you and you know this is kind of be expect uh, to be expected but the thing that annoys me is that I had a lot of objects between me and those ATGMs and those ATGMs uh, should work as you know hollow charged shape charged or basically heat shells so with a very sensitive um, or very fragile fuse that goes off at the slightest touch so to say but there were railway wagons uh, in the way you know destroyed so just the frames and um, every ATGM uh, fired at me got through those objects and hit me yeah and that was kind of annoying um, but also from certain tanks the ATGMs were so slow that I actually in, in tanks like the, the King Tiger uh, at uh, mid to long range like above 500 meters I had time to retreat and or to to yeah, get back into cover and they just couldn't hit me and my answer from a 10.5 centimeter gun well they felt it yeah but just let's talk about this tank, the Sture Emil, or in German, the Holy Tank Destroyer. Joke aside, you know, it's the short form, the ST, which is the same short form as for Sankt, which stands for Holy. And there is one holy thing about this tank, and it's all about uh, this tank, and that's the gun. This is a massive, massive 128mm K40 gun. And while it is not the strongest gun in the game, as I think Gaijin advertised it, it is certainly the most brutal gun at battle rating 6.0. Also in conjunction with this tank. Now this tank does have, or this tank destroyer rather, does have a lot of drawbacks, but also one very big advantage, and that's the gun depression. We're looking at a gun depression of 15 degrees. And together with, uh, you know, the Dicke Max, that's the biggest gun depression in the game. But before we talk further about the gun, let's talk about, you know, everything else of this thing. And at first, let's have a look at the armor. We're looking at basically from the front, mostly unangled 50 millimeters of armor. We have certain additional track armor of 50 millimeters at the bottom glazes or lower glazes and also here on the cheeks of the superstructure which holds the gun and we have a slight oval overlap of armor um, here between the superstructure and uh, the gun mantle which is also 50 millimeters thick and mostly unangled except here um, below and it adds up maximum uh, maximum to 120 millimeters then we have those two yeah, parts of the superstructure, I guess. This one is a viewport for the driver. I'm not so sure what this is. It's a viewport to the side, I guess. Yeah, it's also 50 millimeters, um, but it can maybe save you, especially from heat shells, because I think heat shells will get absorbed. They will get through here, if you hit here, and then they have to exit here. And in terms of penetration values, uh, it shouldn't be a problem, but you know, this is a big, big gap. So this can act as spaced armor 
and also additionally we have uh, it adds up to 110 millimeters it might save you from one or two rounds from maybe a triple a tanks but you know you're such a huge target i wouldn't count on it don't rely on your armor as it just simply mostly doesn't work everything you bounce or you know doesn't get through is more or less luck and the same story from the side we just have 20 millimeters here bit of support from the road wheels and structural steel chassis here and also the tracks which are additional 15 millimeters but you know nothing that uh, you face at this band rating will have problems going through the upper casement side armor is also 30 millimeters thick and well then let's go on the inside as the rear is also very weakly armored uh, the side of the superstructure on both sides is just a simple single ammo rack here are the propellant charges and here are the warheads and look at those warheads uh, you know L compare them to the to the size of of the of the loader here those are enormous shells we'll talk about them in a moment also we have a uh, five uh, five membered crew here we have the machine gunner here which is funny because this tank doesn't have any machine gun then we have the driver here as usual on German tanks then we have also the gunner here and the loader uh, sits here in the back and this is the commander so um, those two guys are the other way around as usual but it has to do with the enormous breach and this is the next point this gun is so big that with most hits you receive either the gun or the gun breach gets damaged and this is something you really can't take in this tank because it's all about the first shot you have to take the first shot and kill the target because also the reload rate of 19.3 seconds uh, on, on my silver crew you know fully um, up or fully expert I'm sorry a very good crew and also trained with silver um, the only thing you can get better is with gold or with a lot of games um, to get the ace crew but yeah it, it won't get any better you know that's the drawback of this gun so yeah that's basically it let's have a look at the uh, ammunition we are having uh, the stock shell the Panzergranate and it features 226 millimeters of penetration for an APC, sh APC shell and we have a whopping TNT equivalent of 786 grams this is if you hit on a normal spot you're guaranteed to one shot everything you shoot at unless you have an unlucky bounce or something then we have a HE shell with 36 millimeters of penetration due to the very limited ammunition supply of just 15 shells you should um, at most take two shells but you know you, you have to use a PHE shells on this and this brings us to the sh uh, to the third shell this is the Panzergranate 43 this is the same designation as the upgraded shell on the Yak Tiger but sadly we don't have the same penetration values as on the Yak Tiger or the Mauser the 100s 128 millimeter gun but we still have 239 millimeters of penetration for an APCBC shell which also features nearly 800 grams of high explosive so yeah after you have researched this shell which isn't your priority by the way or shouldn't be your priority there is no use of taking this shell with you so, so basically your ammunition loadout at the end should be 14 of those shells the Panzergranate 43 or the Panzergranate 43 and maybe one or maximum two of those high explosive shells now let's look at the upgrades you definitely need the parts and surprisingly not the horizontal drive but the tracks 
because you mostly aim with the entirety of your tank because of the narrow gun traverse of um, it seems like five degrees to each side so five degrees to the left five degrees to the right and you you just have to corner stuff you know so you need the the tracks for every bit you get after that you need the adjustment of fire before you get to the fire prevention system because you need to hit whatever you're shooting at reliable and then after that you have to research the elevation mechanism and uh, after that you, you you can choose whatever you want after that I would go for a bit more mobility but you know you don't have the best mobility in the first place at this fully upgraded tank destroyer in arcade please keep that in mind in realistic it's much less we have just short of 550 horsepower uh, for 36.5 tons which is a uh, power uh, horsepower to ton ratio of just under 15 horsepower per ton so you're not very mobile even in an arcade and a uh, limited top speed of 27.2 kilometers an hour is also not very you know very good now sadly I didn't uh, have time or the opportunity for two much gameplay I mostly went on um, city maps and you know this tank destroyer isn't made for city maps in the first place but I had one very good match in in the so here we are on Carpathians this was actually a map I was hoping for after a lot of battles on city maps Carpathian is a very hilly terrain and I think this is the best or one of the best maps to show off the capabilities of the gun depression and you know the actual style of playing now before I go on about this battle I have to say one thing there is one thing about this gun it reminds me about the 10.5 centimeter uh, King Tiger's gun from the design and I actually like that. So, Carpathian, as I said, very hilly terrain. The reason why I go on the right side is because on the left side I would be exposed for a very long time. Side shots, ammo racks on the side of the upper casement, not very good. Also, I'm not fast enough to react to uh, potential threats popping up. And uh, yeah also there are certain locations on the right side where I can hide so I think this is my best uh, choice as you can see the top speed is something we actually can see in this tank at least on flat on a flat surface or a, yeah rather good terrain it's not swampy it's no mud whatever yeah and uh, finally we are near the combat zone and immediately I look around see a lot of dots see this T10M and say to myself nope just hide behind the stone I thought he would uh, shoot at me any moment there you can see the pool reverse speed I tried to climb this hill but there was something in the way and uh, yeah I didn't spot the T10M so I aimed for an AI and look at that kill cam everything is dead so and I just witnessed the power of the ammunition this mighty gun fires I see also a spot on the radar I'm not quite sure if it's a, a player or a, or a bot but I have to reload anyways um, yeah again I tried to position myself around this uh, slope I see an enemy player an actual player and it just hit the front of the tank and it seemed like there was just one uh, crew member left or the kill cam didn't work quite properly doesn't matter kill is kill so again uh, relatively long reload I see the IL-10 
and I thought he would go for me, so I tried to flee, uh, you know, um, across the <laughs> or around this rock. But at this time, I would have already been dead if he really was going for me. It seems like he was intercepted by a fighter, and then he actually went for the T-54 in the cap circuit, which he failed to take out and run himself into the ground. Well, that's nice to know that uh, people, people's behavior, behavior on the dev server isn't that quite different from <laughs> from the live server. Yeah, and then I see this uh, panther and I played with the thought of, you know, rolling up the slope and use the depression and for a second I had him in my sights but I didn't dare to pull the trigger and I thought this T-54 would uh, seal the deal for this panther but it seems like he bounced or missed. Yeah and here you can see how I had to fight the gun handling. Thanks me, I saved him. Again for the reload. Thankfully there is no tank on the other ridge line or no enemy tank on the opposing uh, ridge line at the moment. So I can't advance. At this moment it's actually a stupid idea to advance and uh, yeah this T10M uh, I was lucky to survive that. I think he fired heat. If he had fired his stock shell, the APHE shell, I would be dead for sure. Uh, I am detracked uh, both tracks and it's a rather fast repair this time because none of the crew members are down. So uh, both tracks are repaired, just waiting for the engine and I try to help this T-54 and pay close to attention to what happens next. See the T-10M fired uh, on Sunday there are three enemy tanks and again I have to fight the narrow gun traverse, side shot into the T-10M and blew him up. Yeah and uh, I received an unlucky shot uh, which killed the driver and also killed the engine so I can't traverse. I, I can't aim my gun at the enemy and that was an actual uh, hit from a bot and uh, yeah that's what actually killed me or should have killed me and sadly I couldn't elevate the gun because the elevation, ev um, elevation mechanism was broken. And that was the end of the battle, uh, I survived surprisingly <laughs> and yeah. That's, that's the Sture Mill for you. Don't get carried away by the results. It's uh, times 10 for both uh, research and silver lines. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tank preview. Again, everything is subject to change. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider to give this video a like and share it. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next time.